I want to take this to a really practical level. I want to talk about play because as you know, that's something that I'm passionate about and I think it is very much in our control. I'm getting messages from parents all over the world many, many times a day, hundreds of times a day saying, oh, but how can I get my kids to play? My kids don't play. My kids are clingy. I'm in a small apartment. My kids have very different play styles. My kids fight between them. I ha I'm a working parent, so it can't work for me. All of these different things around how we don't have control over it. And I have to tell you, I understand that, I really do. I've been through these, this process with so many thousands of parents. I just get that it can feel like it's not available to us. We can't get our kids to play. For some reason, these rules won't apply to my kid or to my home or whatever. But not to brag, but my four children play independently an average of about six hours a day, sometimes more. This was true when we lived in a much smaller apartment with no outdoor outdoor spaces. Now we have outdoor space, which we're really grateful for and more space for our play zones, but we did this in a small apartment as well. And it was no less true. They're four very different children of different ages, different temperaments, um, and they all play deeply. Now, I can't make this guarantee about every single child in every situation, but my belief is that just like kids can learn to read, kids can learn to play independently. It's a skill. We just don't value it very much in our culture, unfortunately, which is very, very sad because not only is it a skill that helps us parents by getting a break, especially now, but it's a skill that is so crucial for kids. It gives children so much when they play independently. It develops their skills, their imagination, their creativity, their sense of self. They go through social and emotional processing and skill development and gross and fine motor skills. And oh, the list just goes on and on. And the research is so rich to back that up. So I guess what I want to tell you is that it is possible for everyone and we, the parents as the CEOs, this is something that we can control. Just like we can control that we have books in the home and we teach our children reading and literacy and numeracy skills, so too we can absolutely control that play is part of their repertoire and that play is something that they get to do and that play is something that they are wildly seduced to do by the way that we've set up our home and it doesn't have to take any kind of budget. You don't need to put any money on this. I I promise you have everything that you need already at home. In fact, you might even be getting rid of some stuff or making money in some garage sale because you might have too much. So I could go on and on about this forever, but instead I'm going to let some people who have already gone through this process and made these changes in their home and reclaimed play in a big way, do the talking for me. All right. So let me bring on our first guest of the day, Elizabeth, who is a present player and a mother of two. And she tells how she has reclaimed play and completely reprioritized the way that she sets up a home, what she does within it, especially so that she can support two very different styles of players that her children are. She has two kids, they're distinctly different temperaments. Let's hear Elizabeth's story. My name's Elizabeth and um, I'm living in the Yukon now outside of Whitehorse in the woods with my family, our two kids, uh, ages three and six, boy and a girl, and my partner and uh, his parents. So the kids were pretty okay for playing, but they were still very dependent on me. Life was pretty good, but I was really looking for more support in how to strengthen their independent play muscle. So how to have them less needing me, less wanting me to play with them all the time and being able to play more on their own deeply and therapeutically and just for fun. I'm just aware of things kind of differently. I don't interrupt my children when they play now. I, I understand the importance of, of, of what they're doing differently and why they're getting messy in the way that they are, or all of a sudden why they're running around and so active and crazy. And instead of being like, everybody be quiet, I can't handle this. I'm like, they need to move. They need to move. What are we going to do? These are my movement options. Okay. And then it's strategy. So this whole course, the biggest thing is it's giving me tools and strategies. Instead of acting reactively as much, I still act reactively, but a way less. Now my mind and my heart is calmer and just goes into what can I implement? What do they need or what do I need or how can we both get what we both need right now? And it's working really well. I think something that's been really helpful for um, me is learning the different types of play that my children need and that they need to have really, ideally every day. It doesn't happen every day, um, but sometimes it does. And when it does, they are so much more fulfilled. I have issues with noise. I 
kids when my children are screaming and hollering or shrill sounds and all of that kind of thing. And before I would get just get really reactive or just want to stop it. Stop, 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 stop. Everybody be quiet. I can't do this. I can't handle it. It was about me. Um, and now I'm recognizing they need to play. So they need to play. They need to run around. They need to move their bodies. They need to spin. Learning about children and their need to go upside down and spin. We have a bar. It's supposed to be for clothing in my son's room, and it is not used for clothing. It is his bar for hanging upside down like a bat. And like he hangs up upside down, he does flips, he does jumps. And I was always afraid of him getting hurt, and that finally went away. And then I just didn't get it. And but that's his thing. He needs to move. And now with my other, she likes to go into deep, quiet, imaginary, teeny play. And so now that I know about the importance of their different worlds, I try and protect that or at least allow more of it for each of them. So for her, whenever I can, I try to um, make time where she's not going to get interrupted by her brother. He's got his own project that he wants to do, and she's got her own thing that she wants to do and how to have those complement each other so they each get the different types of play that they want and need for their own happiness and development. Isn't that inspiring? I love how Elizabeth knew so much already, but she still realized that she has to continue her higher education as a parent and stay inspired, learn new strategies, learn new tools so that she can really show up as a CEO and leader of her family. Okay, but you might be thinking, look, that's great for Elizabeth. She lives out on the acreage. I live in a tiny apartment or I have a super clingy child or I work full time and I can't set this kind of stuff up. I hear you, so that's why I need to introduce you to Galina. I'm Galina, and I came from Russia, from Moscow, and now I live in New York City with my husband, Isaac, and two kids, uh, three and a half and uh, 10 months old. I had a one-year-old at that moment, and I was a little bit lost at how to be at this parenting stuff. I didn't want to mess up. I wasn't sure if I'm doing it right. I was just kind of confused. I was overwhelmed with the mess of the toys because grandparents would buy toys. And we just had, even though he was so small, but I was completely <laughs> overwhelmed. And then I joined Present Play. And something that I absolutely love is the zones. Even though I have a very small apartment and oftentimes we have uh, questions about, oh my God, how can you have all these zones in the small apartment? My apartment is uh, one bedroom junior. So it's a one bedroom and one small room where you can't even fit, uh, you know, like queen size bed. It's just a small room. So we were able to put all the zones into, most of them are in the living room. Okay. The play zone and the uh, messy zone. Uh, but the movement zone is something that I brag about and everyone who comes to our house are absolutely at awe and they can't believe it. All the children love it. It took me half a year to convince my husband, but he did install it in the small and the junior room. And we have several swings and not only my child loves it, Again, as I said, all the children who come, they love it. All the time we do FaceTime with anyone. He comes and he shows, oh my God, look at what I have. And he does play uh, on all these swings for 20, 30 minutes. And sometimes we can't really come out because we do live on the East Coast where cold weather is really predominant. So that allows uh, you know, him to burn his team off. And the reason why present play helped me is because again, I would never in the wildest dream think about you know, having and swing in the apartment. And uh, the fact that other people who also had small apartments, who also weren't able to do it, or also were not able to convince their husband, they did it. And that was like such a ripple effect on me. I'm like, okay, so I want it. So I can do it. And then when he sees how amazing it is, it's also going to be an effect on other, you know, things that we put. And mess is on is another one because my husband hates mess. He cannot tolerate it. He just like cannot stand it. And he still, because he sees, oh, He's playing for over an hour and a half. Okay, I can deal with it. Okay, I'll do it. I wasn't sure if my child would play independently because he was clingy. And a lot of parents have this complaint. So when <clears throat> he was born and he was one, I didn't know anything about independent play. As I told you, I only knew attachment parenting. So, oh my God, you cry, I take you. You cry right away, right? And he would not leave me alone for a second. And the moment I joined Present Play, I started implementing all these things like, uh, you know, decluttering, 
strewing, allowing him to be on his own, uh, holding the boundary, you know, I'm here, I know you're there, I'm here, just play. So, and I wasn't sure if it's going to happen because it did take, I would say, close maybe to a year that he really learned, like one day I see and he just plays for 20 minutes and then 30 minutes and then one hour. And I was just shocked and amazed that I didn't know he can do it. I really wasn't even, I'm like, oh, it's all for other kids. So it's okay. Maybe with another kid, I'll start with the right foot and I'll do it right. You know, <laughs> uh, which is actually, she's 10 months old and I put her oftentimes in this like, and she has these little pockets of play of 10 minutes, 15 minutes, which my older never had. So I think I did start with the right foot with my second one, but even with my first one that I didn't start with the right foot and was always having him holding him, he is now able to play for a long time. I was just amazed. And even now, after it's been almost a year that he plays that way, I always get amazed. And I and I take joy in it because I see how much he's learning while he's doing it in his head. He like he he narrates what he's doing, and I, I see how he processes some of the things. Like he would process a doctor's visit sometimes. He would go and play with doctors, and I see he processes that, or he processes reverse like parenting. Like he becomes the father, and he is able to say all these things to his children, you know, and this way he kind of comes out of it and his emotions are much more balanced and he doesn't have to tantrum uh, because of it, because he can pr process this through his own little play. And also like physical things, like physics, like he was doing yesterday, uh, beads and water. And I was seeing how he learned to to pour just enough water from a bigger cup to a smaller cup without spilling it. And I was looking at it and I was amazed because I'm like, oh my God, you're learning this whole concept without being taught in school of how to measure correctly. So that probably was the biggest, you know, takeaway for me. So guys, you see, Galina lives in really cold weather conditions. She can't always get out. Her child was very clingy after a very tight attachment parenting relationship. And she has another child and she works and she deals all of this in a small apartment where she didn't think that she could set up all her zones. And yet she has, like a boss. When we say, I can't do it, it won't work for me, my house is too small, my budget's too small, my child's too clingy, I don't know, I'm too busy. Those with all the love in the world and respect, I have to call them out, those are excuses because people make it work in so many different scenarios and it transforms their lives. Let's talk to another working mom who's rocking it like a boss. Here's Melissa. My name is Melissa Marfia Rosa. I have two children. I have a, um, a seven-year-old daughter and I have a six-year-old. They're 20 months apart and my husband, he works um, home sometimes and he works lots of different places and then my mom and my dad live with us so that's kind of like other complications six people yeah. in a three bedroom so like I was just not knowing how to organize my life um in in the middle of chaos and I was just all these toys and I was like I don't know how to organize all these things I don't know what to do I was scrolling through Facebook like crying <laughs> and it was an ad about like immersing your child in play and I'm like that's what I need and what I didn't realize at the time was that it was also all the parenting tools that I needed um that I that that in the midst of stress, right? Like this is how you can do all these things. Um, and like, you don't have to be everything at once, which, which was fantastic. Something I learned from present play is that it's really, really, really helpful to put, to, to make sure that the structure of the space matches the intent, right? And that it's really understandable and easy for children to identify. Um, so that this is a space for tumbling and that this is a space for play and that this is where you can do messy area and that this, this is for this and that is for that. Since the coronavirus, my kids were out of school. So the first thing I did was make a desk space. <laughs> and I'm like, this is your school space and your school space has all your school materials. This is where schoolwork is done. And there was, it didn't take away from their art area before. So all of their stuff still exists. 
Um, and it made it really easy for me to have my place for work and my husband's place for work and my mom's place for work. And we're all kind of in the same place, all doing our work. <laughs> um, and that really helped with at least the transition to homeschooling. Um, as far as like being home all the time, um, now, uh, th- there's, you know, challenges with resistance or helped us to be able to say like, okay, um, let's go into, you know, present play and see what kind of challenges there are, you know, what are some things that they can do, um, that are away from play that I can set up and already have ready for them so that when they're done doing their work, they've got something that is drawing their attention, Um, and that way you can kind of structure their day where, you know, I've got to get some work done. I can't, you know, um, you know, deal with fighting and dealing, you know, with all the discord that they might have. And so it's just really easy to be like, okay, here, you're going to move on to this area. Now you're going to move on to this area now. Um, and just kind of treat it a little bit like a preschool, right? If you too have experienced this challenge in transitioning into homeschooling and working from home and managing perhaps a multi-generational family and how to flow throughout the day and feel novelty within your space, like yes, we're always home and always in the same four walls. However, there are different experiences to be had without, within that space. I really want you to take a leaf out of Melissa's book here. And finally, let me introduce you to Victoria, a stage manager over at the Disney Resort who works very hard and long hours and is often away from her son. However, Victoria has found the ways to be in touch, deeply in touch with her son through the ways that she caters to his play needs even when she's not home. Take a listen. Hi, I'm Victoria and I live in Southern California. I have one little baby boy and his name's Nash and he's about... 21 months and and we uh, both in entertainment. So he's a musician and I'm a stage manager and we work at the Disneyland Resort here in Southern California. I think my son was around 10 months old when I joined Present Play and it was a very simple guide that I could follow to like set my home up and to make these small changes with stuff that I already had. It wasn't like I was going out and buying more stuff. Yes, slowly I started to maybe buy some like furniture pieces to store toys into differently. But for the most part, everything is stuff that I had. And I was able to redesign my space for my son to play in. And we got rid of the gates, these horrendous gates that I hated. And we just had this open space for him and we created the yes spaces. And it's really was a game changer. And I'm grateful that I found it when he was 10 months old, because at that time I was like, well, is this even relevant for a 10 month old baby, but it was. And as he's gotten older, it's, you know, he naturally kind of has been molded into this like independent play toddler. It's allowed me to parent from work by setting up this environment for him, it's allowed me to feel okay to leave the house because I'm like, okay, I've set it up for success. Like I've set up my, my caretakers for success in our household because I've created these safe environments for him that are geared towards him, you know, with his toys and everything that he needs. There's days where I leave the house at four, four 30 in the morning and I'm home. So I'm, I'm leaving the house before he wakes up. And I don't get home until right at bedtime, which is like 7 p.m. So I'm gone, you know, basically the whole day. So there was days where I'll get up early and I'll strew and I'll leave stuff for him in the bed in his playroom. And then I go go to work and I'll like text, uh, did he like it? Did he play with it? <laughs> and then they'll be like, yeah, he was like, ooh. And then he destroyed it, which is what he does, but it's okay. When you join the, the group, these are a lot of the basics that we are learning is how to declutter and create these spaces and, you know, let our kids play independently. And I'm very excited to kind of start over again in this new year because within a year, it's amazing how much you can acquire and you need to declutter again and how 
your child is growing, so you want to maybe create a different kind of space for them or reorganize their space to fit their needs now. So you guys, you too can reclaim play. You too can create five play zones in whatever home you have with whatever budget you have. This is doable stuff. I know that it is so easy to just Netflix and chill all day in our pajamas with a bottle of wine. I get the temptation. But I am calling you to use this time to step into your leadership role, your creative role, and to really kind of get your MBA in parenting, right? Get your training, make this your creative, self-actualizing, self-growth realm, right? That you step into. Through the lens of parenting, I can have creativity, I can self-actualize, I can find fulfillment, and I can grow even spiritually. And it starts with the lowest hanging simple fruit of just designing our five play zones in our home and watching the play flourish. So don't forget to check out the challenge and the Play Guru course before they come down. And I hope I get to welcome you a warm welcome into present play because that is where we take these things to the next level. Любите воспитывать детей так же, как любите быть родителями.